In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a massive, massive look here at the tropics. And this will probably be another very long video, just like yesterday's, because we have a ton to go over. In addition to the tropics, where we are really, really seeing an increased threat with one of our systems for the southeastern coast, it's very likely that they will be directly impacted at this point. We're also going to be going over the entire upcoming pattern for the lower 48 as far as precipitation. There's a lot of folks that need it and the temperatures as a whole. <clears throat> so let's just dive into things and we can see tropical storm Humberto, which did develop yesterday while we were making our video. Uh, this storm has 70 mile per hour wind speeds. So uh, a pretty strong storm. And this is expected to become a category one hurricane uh, by approximately 2 p.m. tomorrow so at some point between tonight overnight into the morning and to, uh the afternoon tomorrow we should see this one become a hurricane and it is currently projected by the national hurricane center to be a category three hurricane for a while now the last one that we saw was not too long ago in gabrielle and that one actually exceeded expectations and became a category four so that is going to be interesting to see how this forecast does with this one clearly conditions are very ripe out there for tropical development we see this one on satellite, which I'm going to turn uh, to white so we can see it better. This one right here, and it wanted to get some sort of eye going almost. Uh, obviously, it's a pretty weak storm to have an eye, but it almost did there. There's obviously really, really good rotation. So this storm is pretty rapidly developing at this point. Now, the other cluster that is going to become the more concerning system is right now between Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic. And we can see a lot of very tall clouds up there. Uh, this is certainly uh, going to be an impactful system. It already is a huge rainmaker for Haiti, Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. This one is going to free up as it moves north of Puerto Rico or Dominican Republic and Haiti, better yet, into the more Caribbean area like the Bahamas. And at that point, uh, that is when we're going to be seeing uh, some pretty rapid development with this one once it's in open waters in this area. Uh, now, the percentages as it stands right now is an 80% chance that we see this one develop over the next 48 hours, the next two days, and a 90% chance that we see this one develop over the next seven days, which is pretty much maxed out probabilities. So uh, there's a slim chance that it takes longer than two days for this one to develop, but at some point between tomorrow on Friday and Saturday, the next day, this one will likely be at least a tropical depression, if not tropical storm. And at that point, we're going to see a lot of better data coming in as this one's developing, and we will learn a lot more. Because of the close proximity between these two systems, we are seeing a very high difficulty uh, with the models uh, being able to predict this one. There's just a lot going on, a lot of potential interactions that could happen, and that's why we see just tons of different solutions. But at this point, everybody from the mid-Atlantic coastline all the way down the rest of the southeast coast needs to be on high alert but we're trying uh, to kind of pinpoint an area here between south carolina and southern north carolina that looks like the most likely area for this one to make landfall at some point likely northern south carolina coast maybe but it's not going to surprise me if between now and when we see this one develop if it trends south or trends northward uh, and that's going to kind of increase the range at which I could see this one really impacting. Uh, and once that one develops, I think that we're going to see a much uh, more concise vision of what to expect. Now, another thing I wanted to note, the Northeast here, while we're on this Radar Omega app, we do have a flash flood discussion up here for a lot of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. This is a kind of bittersweet thing because for one, flooding, not good. But this does mean a lot of rainfall is coming down to these northeast areas. We can see the cloud cover as well. These areas really, really need it. This is obviously an excessive amount, so that could be impactful, and especially with the drought conditions and the dry dirt. This water tends to not want to soak in so quickly. It wants to kind of sit on top or, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, obviously move downhill. So that can create extra uh easy conditions for flooding to occur unfortunately but the rainfall is very good news up there let's go ahead and move over to some of our model guidance and i want to take a look here at something new uh this is the website polarwx.com i've been kind of checking out their stuff recently it is a very good website it's a little bit more complex uh, to navigate but 
they do have good data and this particular map that we're looking at here is the gfs trend so what it's doing is it's taking each model run and showing you basically where it took the system and we can see for the next little bit they do have a clear vision the gfs model here has a pretty clear vision that this one's going to skirt along the kind of eastern edge of the bahamas but uh, we see a huge huge spread the black is the most recent model run uh the pink is going to be the oldest model run so we see that moving way out to sea and then the one after that is the purple and that one kind of hit south carolina moved across the deep south and then the most recent one is a lot closer to that so maybe we're starting to get agreement but overall between the last three model runs you can see a massive massive spread in what these models are really expecting and here we're going to do the same thing with the European model with this system. Although with this one, we have five previous model runs. And that, I guess, includes the most recent one, again, in the black. And the purple's the second most recent. Again, northern South Carolina coast, southern North Carolina coast. Somewhere in there is where we see this one striking on the previous two model runs. And they're pretty close together, these two most recent model runs. Before that, we had three in a row that showed an out-to-sea solution. So it would get just to the north of the Bahamas and then go, go out to sea from that point. Uh, but obviously massive spread from model run to model run here, which is again, partly due to it being underdeveloped so far. And the other part of it is that more intense Humberto that is further offshore that is definitely drawing in some interaction and disrupting the potential path of this as far as what the models see at least. Now here's another graphic I wanted to show you. This is the G fs ensemble model track density so each little gray line that you see is an individual member of this ensemble model the blue is uh the gfs traditional model and then the black is the is the mean average of the ensembles so when it's this spread out you're going to want to kind of ignore the black one there for the most part because there's so much spread that it's just going crazy uh, but we see members i mean showing this thing strike into uh, you know, as far south as Georgia, South Carolina border here, we see some members uh, moving up into South Carolina, North Carolina, which is this consensus. We have some moving up closer to North Carolina, and then we still have a lot of members out to sea here. So you can tell when we take these individual members here, there is still an insane amount of spread with what these models are thinking with this one. Same thing here on the european ensemble model i mean this one's even crazier we have some showing this thing moving across cuba and then hitting southern florida we have some hitting again north carolina south carolina area which is our most likely track kind of more up into north carolina virginia has a few and then out to sea still has some so when we look at this it really puts it into uh into our brains just how crazy all the possibilities are with this one and this is why I'm very, very hesitant with this one to try to say, okay, we really, really, really feel like it's going to do this uh, because there is so many possibilities. There are so many variables that we really just need to be on high alert for the entire Southeast coastline because we cannot rule out. We can't even say it's highly unlikely for many of these areas. I'd say Florida and Southern Georgia is more in the highly unlikely territory, but basically from the South Carolina, Georgia border, all the way up into more of the heart of the mid Atlantic, somewhere in between there is probably where this one would hit if it hits, but there's still that percent chance that it goes out to sea. It's just crazy. It makes my brain hurt thinking of all the possibilities here. Uh, and just while we're at it, here is the Canadian models, ensemble model, uh, track density. So again, these colors is gonna show the density of how many of these models are moving through the area. So it is a good idea to generally follow that color and that's gonna give you a good idea maybe but again we do have some greens popping up in here showing a lot of models moving through there uh but generally these models do agree on this area being the most likely at this point this is a cool one here google deep mind model which is an ai model by google pretty crazy um i think the most interesting part about this one is that we have huge spread we have a huge split fork in the road on this model relatively new model take it with a grain of salt um i haven't heard of this one you know having some crazy win yet this might be it i guess but uh we have the majority of these actually moving out to sea as of the 12z model run today on september 25th which is going against the grain with a lot of models so most of them are curving out to sea 
here before it ever reaches the southeast. And then the second most likely outcome is somewhere around southern South Carolina, northern Georgia. So for me, I'm going to keep my eyes on this model just because it's interesting. Um, and it's going to update itself whenever it's wrong or whenever it's right. It is going to continuously progress. It doesn't need humans to get in there and mess with the code as much. Uh, this is a model that is going to consistently self-correct and try to improve, which is just a really fascinating concept to me. It's a little freaky. I know it freaks people out, but it is in things like this extremely useful, obviously, if it can, you know, get better and better and better for real. Uh, we'll have to see how that goes over time. But I would say this model gets a massive win if it does move out to sea, because at this point, most other models are not showing that. Or if we get a much more southern strike like Georgia or southern South Carolina, this would also be a pretty huge win for this model. But if it lands somewhere in, you know, northern South Carolina, eastern North Carolina there, kind of in between the fork, that would be a massive blunder, obviously, to this model's uh, like resume of forecasts. We'll be watching it, though. Um, now, we're going to move over to Weatherbell here and kind of just go over the general spaghetti model guidance. And I wanted to show you yesterday's model guidance from the 18Z model run. This is what we showed you in yesterday's video. So take really good mental note of it. And I'll, sh I'll make like an imaginary cone here uh, to kind of just show you uh, the spread we were seeing on the model. So something like that. There's a few outliers, but that is going to be a generally good cone. Uh, I guess that isn't going to work for me to draw it on screen because it's going to change the projection of the map. But just take note of where these models are showing it. Uh, a lot of them curving northward, you know, over the Bahamas. None really curving inland. Look at today's 18Z model run. This is 24 hours apart. Uh, and now we have massive amounts of model run or models in general showing a South Carolina strike or maybe southern north carolina somewhere in here is the general consensus for the 18z model run again this is more updated than what we even just looked at on that other website so uh we are seeing models come in really concise on this idea i have seen them get concise and that doesn't mean that we're going to continuously see that outlook they could be very concise and okay like let's say this is where we're generally seeing the models show it the next model run could be a little further northward or a little further southward and then the one after that could be a little further southward than that one or northward and we start to move the whole bunch kind of north or southward or whatever uh that can happen as well and you know with how much time we have there will probably be shifts uh, we're gonna have to really track this one day in and day out uh the gfs ensemble model we kind of already went over this but again north south carolina north carolina here is the european ensemble model kind of all over the place on the 12z model run and then for the Canadian Ensemble model, once again, all over the place. So there is still a wide variety of options. The deterministic models are the individual models that we looked at. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of just navigate us back to it here. Uh, they are a little bit more concise with how unpredictable the system is likely to be. The Ensemble models might be more useful to us, but the only one that looks relatively concise is the GFS Ensemble model here. We're going to have to see. I mean, this is going to be a huge, huge journey with these models with this storm. The intensity guidance as of this 18Z model run, uh, the majority of them are somewhere around strong tropical storm category one area here. The majority do get us there right before it strikes land. Uh, there is a few that keep us at weaker tropical storm, but the general bunch is again going to be in that strong tropical storm or category one hurricane territory before striking wherever it strikes. Now for our system Humberto, this is getting pretty interesting. There's a few outliers. You don't want to pay as much attention to these. Um, mostly we want to pay attention to the bunch here. I didn't get yesterday's model run on screen, but I do feel like this is curving us way closer to wherever our next system is going to be than we saw yesterday. So that definitely is going to be interesting as well. And the intensity guidance for this one is going crazy two major groups one between category one and two hurricane and then there's another huge group that takes us into category three or four status so this could very well be a very very strong hurricane i do agree with the national hurricane center that probably the the general consensus of this is right about category three status like we saw earlier but four can't even be ruled out here at all now we're going to try to just move pretty quickly through this because yesterday's video was insanely long and i want everybody to be able to see everything uh, without having to spend, you know, their whole day watching the video. 
here's our past 30 days of temperatures. Um, I'm just updating you guys on this daily. Still, with all the heat we've had, the first week or two of September was cold enough to where we're still looking at blues in the east. We'll see how this evolves over the coming days. Your European model run, again, a lot of precipitation in the east. And as we move through, we start to get our next system going over the Bahamas. Pay attention to where this one hits. Right there in between South Carolina and North Carolina, kind of the area we're watching. Uh, it does bring tons of rainfall all around the North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, the Smoky Mountains here. Uh, I hate to bring that up. They just had, obviously, uh, a year ago, just the crazy, crazy flooding up there. This could be a pretty big rainmaker for them. I put that in uh, terms like that because you guys saw historic flooding last year. Nothing like that is being projected, but heavy amounts of rainfall could be possible along these mountain ranges as well. The scope of areas that could see heavy rainfall continuously for hours and hours and hours of this one is really, really large. This is expected to be a massive rainmaker. So even if you're not getting hit directly, the impacts from the rainfall could be really, really, really intense, uh, even if you're pretty far from it. We'll go over the total precipitation in a little bit. And overall, that system leads to a lot of rainfall occurring for days here in the southeast. They do really need it, so that is good news. We do get some precipitation up in the northeast. And then we end up with you know a stormier pattern up and down the eastern seaboard here all the way towards October 10th. So this is really interesting. Uh, the GFS model... Again, stormy, and then we get the system that moves a little bit further south into central South Carolina, but still really similar to that European model's projection. So I do think we're getting more concise here with every single model run that goes by. Uh, and then again, really, really heavy rainfall, kind of the trend here in the east after that storm. So look at this total precipitation. All of a sudden, the east coast as a whole looking at relatively large amounts, but obviously this area here is the really, really large amounts. And when we get into the browns, it's 5 to 10 inches of precipitation. Uh, your bluish shades in there are going to be 10 to 15 inches of rain, according to the European model. And the magentas, 15 to 20 inches of rain for eastern and central North Carolina there. Uh, this is over the course of the next two weeks. But as we kind of just take this back to just the, the storm, uh, and once that's said and done, Almost all of this occurs from that storm. This is through Sunday the 5th. So this is uh, the 10 day outlook here. Uh, and just crazy, crazy, crazy amounts of rainfall happening across North Carolina, Virginia, and bits of South Carolina. Uh, despite the storm really heading into South Carolina, the northern edge is actually the area that gets a lot of this rainfall getting pushed on shore. Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, looking at the anomalies, obviously. This would bring about really, really substantially above average precipitation for a lot of these areas. Uh, we're talking inches and inches and inches above average for Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina through October 2nd. This is only the next seven days. Um, so this is obviously huge departures from what's typical. And this is why we're careful on our monthly and seasonal outlooks to mention the tropical activity because... Even if I was forecasting below average precipitation on the East Coast for September, I would be totally, totally correct up until a tropical system hits and throws a wrench in it. So that's why we can sometimes try to predict what the pattern looks like, but there's things that can really disrupt it, to say the least. I'm going to be really focused on keeping you guys up to date with this storm and really all the systems out there over the coming days as we kind of just navigate it together. So be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.